Hi class, welcome back. In this module, we are talking about what is accessibility. We're going to talk about how to define accessibility from the end user and developer perspective, as well as talk about the laws around accessibility. So let's start with the end user developer perspective. So in my mind, this is accessibility. On one side, we have someone with a disability, and their job is to really find the right assistive technology. And in general, I would say it's relatively simple if you have the money to buy the assistive technology. Sometimes um, some of the costs can be prohibitive as the assistive technology can be somewhat expensive. In this case, we see an end user. This woman looks like she could be paralyzed from the waist down based on her assistive tech she's using. She's using a chin mouse, which is called a joust. It's a facial mouse. And the joust will control the cursor, just as a mouse will. And she simulates, um, she creates uh, left and right clicks using this, what's called a puff and suck switch, which is in her mouth. And a puff of air means a right click, and a suck means a left click. And she's able to navigate the internet fine in general. On the other side, we have the developer, and that's us. The developer's job is really to remove the obstacles from allowing this person or any person's assistive, assistive technology from working. And in most cases, creating an environment, creating, designing a web page or a document to allow assist, assistive technology to work is relatively simple, but sometimes it does require a little bit more thought. Now we're going to move into some of the laws around accessibility and disability. This is the first law, which I consider one of the most important pieces of civil rights legislation in our generation, or in anyone's generation. It's called the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. This law is an extension to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which extended equal rights to people who, of different races, different religions, um, different gender identities, and it extended those, those same protections in the Civil Rights Act to people with disabilities. So you might have noticed around the early 90s, wheelchair ramps being built, elevator lifts being installed. This all had to do with the Disabilities Act of 1990. And this was done with bipartisan, bipartisan support in the US Congress. And it was uh, signed by George H.W. Bush, George Bush I. And this is what he had to say when he signed the, this bill. Every man, woman, and child with a disability can now pass through the once closed doors into a bright new era of equality, independence, and freedom. That's a very powerful message, and alongside him is Justin Dart, Justin Whitlock Dart, one of the civil rights heroes for disability. Next we have the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. This is a federal law that applies to any agency that receives federal funding, including our campus and most universities for that matter. And this is uh, the two laws that apply to disability. The first law is the 508, which is um, gives specific guidance on information technology to make them accessible. It's, it's giving them guidance very similar to the WCAG 2.1, and they're actually in line now. And this standard has been adopted by a number of Western European countries as well as uh, Australia and New Zealand. And this standard has become the gold standard and there's different levels of compliance and our goal is currently a double A level compliance within the 508. The 504 is another law that applies to students and it pretty much extends the same rights to people students with disabilities as a student without a disability. It says that every student with a disability is entitled equal access to education as every other student and that law applies to UCLA as well. Next, we have the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, also known as the WCAG for the accessibility nerds out there. And we are currently in version 2.1, and version 2.1 it has been aligned with the 508 standards. So we're really looking at reducing the number of standards in the accessibility community, and we've adopted the WCAG or the 508. I think they're kind of interchangeable right now. The WCAG gives guidance on um, websites and any electronic information. It is general enough where these standards can be applied to almost any software or any web environment, but they're specific enough to give you the, the guidance that you need to design your site correctly to make it accessible. And WCAG is broken down into four basic principles known as POUR, which is P-O-U-R, and principle number, uh, principle number one is P, and that's perceivable. It includes alt text, alternative design sessions, making sure your color contrast is correct. 
The next one is O, which is operable, which makes means that keyboard only nav must um, uh, it, you must be able to navigate your website using keyboard only, and other as, uh, other assistive technologies as well must be navigable. Your website must be navigable using other assistive technologies. Principle number three is content and controls must be understandable. They must be interpreted by a screen reader. You must have your content on your website um, called in a format called OCR, meaning that you don't have a scanned document and just upload it. It has to be um, what's called optical, optical character recognition, meaning that you could highlight the text and search and cut and paste the text. And your website and your document or your technology must operate in predictable ways. The fourth principle and last principle, it means that your content, not really your content, but your website should be robust enough to work on, on most platforms with current and future technologies. So those are the guidances based on the WCAG. The WCAG is a much longer document and gives a lot more guidance, so I encourage each of you guys to, on your own time to take a look at the WCAG. It'll give you everything that you need to make your website more accessible.